X-Men, The Last Stand. Uh, this is the third of the original X-Men trilogy. And somehow, even though it was created by someone who isn't a, a suspected pedophile, this is the worst one. Well, he actually is a suspected sexual harasser, though. Oh, okay. Well, that helps. Because this is this. Wait, this is Brett, Brett Ratner. Brett right? Ratner, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't I'm know much sure about. Pretty sure he him. got in trouble last year. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Should that make me feel better or worse? Uh, equal. Okay. I'm so I feel the same. This is definitely the worst of the three, in my opinion. What What do you think overall? Oh, you think it's so, no? I think it's better than number two. Really? Just barely, not like a whole lot. I I I like the wider variety of characters. Yeah. Why don't you sum up number three in one minute? Ready? In I feel like that's longer than you're making it sound. Okay. So basically, this one is they there's a mutant five seconds. who oh no. There's a mutant who has the ability to cure other mutants. They take his, they harness him somehow and able to cure mutants, which they are pushing for mutants to do. It, it's a split between the mutant community. Some would like to be cured, some would not. They don't see them as being diseased, so there's nothing to cure. This, of course... Um, That's 30 seconds. Is the whole, Oh, wow. Basically, it's the plot of the movie. Uh, some, like I said, some mutants want to because they're, they feel like their power is more of a hindrance than good, like Rogue. 45. And then there are others who, like, yeah, I, I, if I could manipulate fire, I wouldn't want to fix that either. And basically it's, it's good mutants versus bad mutants versus government. Three, two, one. I well, said that, what I need to say. Yeah. Did you talk about Jean Grey at all though? Uh, not at all. Yeah. So that was one of my issues I had with this movie is that this is two different movies just crammed together into one. Right. Yeah, you, this is a Jean Grey movie, but also the last stand movie. Yeah. So, uh, the dark Phoenix should have been her own like standalone villain, right? She's so dangerous, so strong, so opposing that it should have only been her as a villain. Magneto, who's already been the villain in two of these movies with the same premise, with the same plot, like the same drive, right? Which is fine. Like he can have the same motivations, but it gets kind of boring seeing the same thing over and over. Like, you know, he just keeps trying to overthrow the government for mutants. And while I think it's a an interesting story, I think it could have been so much better had they split those into two or taken one out completely, which I think... Yep. They should have taken out the Magneto plotline because they've already done that twice. Like, don't. Oh, no, I'm the other way. I, I feel like they could have wrapped everything up with Magneto and then been done with it. In this one or in the second one? In this one. So make you make it about his his it's it's everybody's last stand essentially. It could be his last stand against the government and you know becoming whatever you know they are and then it's the good guys last stand against magneto yeah but what with what they did the best story the best movie would have been the dark phoenix don't you think or do you think it should have been magneto's trilogy yeah no that that's what i'm saying it should, okay. like a magneto trilogy yeah mm. But the but they needed they needed Phoenix on the bad guy side, right? Because she she's gotten so powerful that had she been a complete good guy, she could have just wiped everybody out. They needed her to be a villain. Well, they shouldn't they couldn't have... just have her be a villain without exploring all the stuff that they did. So that's why I feel like it kind of did end up two different plots that kind of relied on each other. Well, I don't. So I don't know the comic book storyline no i don't either and so i don't know exactly how it all went down but i believe the dark phoenix storyline is like a pretty big long one that is only focused on her there's no additional plots you know like it's just right. them trying to save her get her back and stop her which sounds kind of like what we will be getting in the actual dark phoenix movie yeah which i think is going to be bad i don't i don't have high hopes for that after seeing apocalypse but this one was so 
there's just so much going on that it was like really hard to get invested into any of it. Like I was, I was so bored watching this movie. I don't know how you felt, was, but I was like it, struggling to get through it. Normally, well, I watch them all in one shot. This yeah. took—I had to take a break. I mean, partly because we had stuff to do, but I was just like, so, uh, "I need to take I'm, a break." I'm finding that the uh, these three movies that we've watched have been boring, yeah. but I've never felt like they were boring. So I don't know if it's because my taste is different, or if I think there's a part of it goes into like. Watching the movie because you want to watch it, and then mm. watching it because like you need to. It's yeah, you know, and I think that kind of makes it boring. Yeah, I like, think there's. I if think it were just on and I was watching it, I'd probably enjoy it a lot more than like, all right, I got to sit down, I got to watch this so we can talk about it. It's, I think it's harder to get through. Yeah, I think there's a lot of factors with that. I think one, it's old, right? Like it's mm-hmm. whatever it is now, ten years, more than ten years since it came out. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Two, there's a lot of other movies that have come out that have been better. So it's like you watch it and you're like, oh, I wish that this would be more like what they do later. So that can be a frustrating factor. You're watching it with a more critical eye. You're like trying to see things that are annoying or try to see things that you like. So it's you're not getting as involved with the story. And yeah. you've also seen a lot of more movies since you've seen this originally or when you used to watch it there's a lot more movies in your head that you can compare it to and be like, Oh wow, that's actually not that good. You know, like yeah. the first time you see something you're like, wow, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. Then when you see 10 other versions of the same thing, now you have like a list and that thing can easily get dropped to the bottom and you're like, Oh, actually it's not that good. It was new. So that was exciting. But once I've had all this extra yeah. experience, it's, it's really gone downhill. So how, how many times have you seen <clears throat> Logan? Just, uh, I think just the once. I think I've only seen it one time. Do you think that could happen with Logan? It won't be as enjoyable. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna watch. I've the, only seen it. I've the, only seen it the once. Also, I'm I'm intending to watch the black and white version. So, because I have it on Blu-ray, and there's mm-hmm. the black and white version and the the original, and so I think that will help. But I, I think the story is actually pretty strong, and that it's mostly character driven not really event driven where like this one the it was all like set pieces do you know what i mean like yes oh yeah it was like here's a fight here and then they jump somewhere else and then here's a fight here and then they jump somewhere else and here's you know like and the fighting wasn't that great which didn't help also it's gotten better but yeah it's not it's not like fantastic yeah well yeah it's way better than the first right like the first looked terrible in the fight scenes but uh there was a lot of weird, uh, like, jumpiness to the fights. I don't know mm-hmm. if you noticed that. Like, it just seemed not, it didn't seem smooth. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't seem, Yeah. like, it didn't feel right when you watched it. I don't know. Maybe I'm being crazy. But, um, and also, they, I really don't like Halle Berry as Storm. You don't like Halle Berry as Storm or you just don't like Storm? I think I like Storm. I just don't like Halle Berry as her. I don't like the way they've used her. I don't like the way she, like, she acts. Like her. I think I, I'm around the same. I think when I first watched X-Men, I didn't really know who Halle Berry was. Yeah. So it was fine. And then now it does. It kind of takes me out of it. Yeah. She Well, she like she plays it really meek for how strong she is. And like I think uh, that she is somewhat like a gentle like gentle in her strength as a character but she doesn't ever come across as the strength side that's only the cgi that makes her seem strong yeah that's true i don't know what's your opinion do you like her as storm i don't dislike her as storm yeah i what'd you think of that spinning elbow move she did where she was like going around elbowing people <laughs> that's so dumb it was pretty dumb. It's like you have all this power and that's the move you go with. She in this one, she actually creates lightning with her hands. Yeah. Which is something that you and complained about in the other ones. Yeah, so I, I definitely like that. That was a lot better. What is going on is, in your background? Is someone just my, playing with a bucket of glass? 
It's like freaking Legos. <laughs> okay, that makes more Brayden. sense. Brayden, I'm serious, please, son. Yes, but your mom's not recording a podcast. <laughs> so, who's our, so who is your so favorite I, X-Men character? Uh, I, Wolverine. It's I gonna think, always be it's gonna always be Wolverine for me. Yeah. I think Nightcrawler was always my favorite as a kid. I don't like him in these movies, but him as a character, I think is is cool. Well, okay, no, I remember like like I was saying uh, in the last one. As a kid, I for some reason I really liked Colossus. Well, Colossus. So, oh, not Colossus. I thought you said Cyclops. Cyclops is awesome. I don't like Scott Summers, but Cyclops is cool. I don't like Summers, and it makes it kind of ruins Cyclops for me. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. Uh, but I, I always like Colossus, but they don't use him very much. But I do. Th- I know they use him in the future trilogies, and he's even in Deadpool. And oh, I like he? that Colossus. Yeah. Have you seen the Deadpools? Yeah, I've seen some of the first one. Ooh, I haven't seen okay. the second one. Okay, so you ha- okay? That's so. Yeah, he's a character in those. He's like one of the very few characters they could get the rights for. Yeah. And there's lots of jokes that go along with it, but. What is happening? I dropped my ring. I need to stop fidgeting. You fidgeter. I know. Um, uh, but I like Col- I always like Colossus. But as as far as like a main character, it's gonna be it's gonna be either Wolverine or I just really like Magneto. Also, yeah, I really I didn't like Magneto in this one. I didn't like Ian. Uh, McKellen. Yeah, I almost said McGregor. Ian McKellen. I, so did I. I didn't like him in this one at all. He felt. Like the way they filmed his powers where he just posed and then it, it would happen around him. It was so boring visually. Yeah. Um, Cause I, one, I, I don't like CGI. I'm not like super into it. Like I, I don't know. I, it, it's not that, it's not that impressive. Like it's impressive technically, but to me, CGI should be, you know, uh, like the frame around the picture, not the picture right. itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it helps. It makes things better. But it shouldn't be the showcase. And when it is a showcase, it's like, all right, let's get past this. This is getting kind of boring. Um, and that's how I felt Magneto was in this one, where in the other ones, I felt like his acting was more of the showcase. And this one just felt like he's, yeah, he definitely he's a felt tool. muted in this yeah. one. Mm-hmm. And part, I don't know if it's because it's a different director or I don't really know what. Well, part of it, they had just so why. much going on. And he's there, already yeah. done so much uh, groundwork for a storyline of we need to free mutants and we need to let them, you know, yeah, you know, like not be controlled by Homo sapiens or whatever. Like that, it's just the same thing over and over and over. Which, to my original point, don't put him in this movie. <laughs> like if you're not going to use him, like he's such a strong presence, he's such a strong character, and if it's like. Oh, we need to tone it down because he's been in it too much. Well, don't even put him in it at all. Like that yeah. seems that seems like a bad idea to me. Like I would have, like I said, well, m- much I'm sure rather. He was probably signed on for a three movie deal. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you don't think like, so? Like I don't. I'd be surprised if they had an intention of making three movies from the beginning. Oh, I'm sure they did. I bet you don't I, think so? I don't think so. No, but I I don't know. Maybe not. Um. But like I was saying, Who do I you think, think is the worst. Okay, keep going. What I was saying is, I think the better movie is take out all the additional mutants, right? All the mm-hmm. I don't even know what to call them. The <laughs> they're like the punky, league. the Brotherhood. Yeah, but they're all like had that weird like gothic the, yeah, punk that, style. Yeah, that, that punk. Yeah, and like take all of them out. They don't need to be in here because there's, there's already so many characters. Um. The Juggernaut was a fun character. I liked him in this. But other than that, all the side villains were kind of pointless. And yeah. I feel like had all the X-Men work together, you don't kill Scott Summers off in the beginning. You let him stay in. You don't kill Xavier off. And have all the X-Men work together to stop Jean Grey is a way better movie with a way more natural progression. Right? You can still sacrifice her at the end of the second one. She comes back and now she's, you know, there. she keeps coming back to the X-Men, but in doing so, she's destroying them at the same time. And then, so they're trying to stop her and save her. Yeah. It's a way better movie to me. Like what they did is, I don't know, just 
I it, like the whole I like the whole plot of there being an actual cure that the mutants can choose, you know. Well, I I'll give you to this. Do so. Let's take that plot and put it on the second movie. Let's erase the second movie completely. Okay. Put that so, that story arc in there. Like get rid of Striker yeah. and all the stuff he was doing with the mind control. Have the like cure. Stryker. <laughs> oh, you're difficult. These movies. I, no, I we we've been talking about how bad and boring these movies are. I'm trying to say, oh, this might make them better, and you're over here no. like, oh, let's not change them. Let's not change them. They're good. No, no, no. Exactly no. the way they are. It's solved by just not doing the Jean Grey stuff until a different movie. That, that's true, but it's boring. It's the same. It's the same villain three times in a row with the same motivation three times in a row with the same outcome three times in a row. Like it's just the yeah. And that's why they added the Dark Phoenix into this one because I think they wanted to avoid that. But like I was saying, you shouldn't use Magneto at that point. Well, so like like I was saying, I like the concept of there being a cure that you know some mutants who want to choose it and some don't. But then how it's how what Magneto was telling them, like, yeah, it's a choice now, but you wait until they're going to come and force it on you. And then, yeah. you know, they start doing that. And then him being one of the most powerful mutants reduced to just being an old man at the end, yeah. I think is huge. Because it, it literally, it takes away everything he's ever done. Like, he has mm-hmm. nothing in life anymore. Yeah, I think in concept, it's really cool. I think in what like what they actually did is not so cool like the they i i don't i don't care about like the whole idea of like oh you've disrespected these characters that people love or whatever that to me is a dumb argument but oh is that an is that a real argument well like with uh uh the last jedi right people are like you ruined luke this isn't luke and people are like making change.org oh, yeah. petitions to get the last Jedi remade and all this crazy stuff. Well, people uh, make a petition for everything. Yeah. But uh so in killing all the off those characters, right? They killed off Jean Grey, they killed off Scott Summers, they sk- killed off Xavier, they killed off or ended Magneto, ended Mystique, right? Like you've you've shut out all these like really popular characters. Yeah. I don't care that they changed the storyline from the comics. What's annoying to me is they shut the door on telling more stories in this universe that they've built. And like, I get, you know, it's the last stand, right? This is the final one. They don't have any intention of moving on from here, but it, the, it was very final for a comic book movie, which it, felt it does strange. seem because these movies were huge hits, right? When they came out. Yeah, and so this one, when you're, I think, was considered the worst even at the time. People hated this one. But yeah. it's crazy to think that when you're writing this third one, knowing that the first two have been crazy successful and there's so much that you can do, yeah. it seems really short-sighted to, to be like, and no, we're just going to do the three and then walk away. Well, trilogies were kind of it back in the they day. They still kind of are. It's, I mean, excluding the, you know, the Marvel, well, even kind of with Marvel, it's still... <laughs> Everything works around a trilogy almost. <laughs> Ugh, ev- I feel like everything is written to be a trilogy. Um, well, a trilogy is really simple. Not well, not simple, but it's got a it's a, got a very clear structure, so it's easy to to pull off, right? You have your. But then there's so much like pressure. Like even if the first movie is horrible, they're like, "Well, we got to do number two and three anyways." Uh, yes and no. I mean, there's a lot that they just never picked up again. Like Aragon didn't get picked up. The Percy Jackson stuff I don't think got picked up. Um, I think there's a lot of movies that just didn't go anywhere because they didn't do very well. I'm, yeah. But the this, there's no reason for this to be a trilogy. X-Men. Because no, there's, no, it's it open-ended. Right? Like everything is, is open. And... Uh, for them to be like, nope, we're killing everyone off, and this is it, is a weird, a weird way to take it because there's no reason for that, you know. Like the um, what's his, can, what's his name? Well, who's the director in the last one? Um, Singer. Yeah, Brian Singer. So Brian Singer directed Days of Future Past, 
And in doing so, he undid everything Brett Ratner did, which <laughs> yeah, I can't disagree with. You know, like, no, not completely. It makes it, way more see, sense. I can see them killing off Scott, right? Because I don't feel like he's got. He he to me is kind of boring. I don't feel like he's. Well, I don't need so, more more X Men movies that have him in it. That was. I can see them. Did you know yeah. that's James Marsden from yeah. Westworld? Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know who James Marsden is. I wasn't. It wasn't a personal attack, Taylor. It was a question with a clarification. Look, before I move on with my point, yeah. did you know Xavier was Patrick Stewart? Did you know Obama from the White House? Yes. Um, I didn't, I knew, like, I recognized him the whole time, but I was like, who is that? Why, who is it? And then I had to look it up, and then I realized that's why I asked. Oh, that's where I know you from. You were in the parking lot earlier. <laughs> All right. Uh, Smai? I have no idea. He said he's leaving. Nope, he doesn't know much about X-Men. So, But uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, <laughs> well, he's really He doesn't like how you said his name. I don't blame him. I'm a dum-dum. I can't read. That's why I talk and don't write. True that. Man, my allergies are kicking my butt today. Um... James Marsden, I, so, what were you saying before I interrupted you so rudely? So, I, like I said, I could see, yeah, so rude. I could see them killing him off, like, he's, that's yeah. fine. Like, if you want to add a character death. Uh, even the same with Xavier, right? Because he's, mm. he's a great character, but I feel like a lot of his story and drive comes from his earlier life, which yeah. you can explore in other movies, which they do. So, this can be his end, and you can still tell stories about it, but... But the one that is crazy, like I said, is is Jean Grey. Like, there's so much there. Yeah. And you did nothing with it. They should have killed Wolverine. In this one? Yeah. He should have died in this one because it was his trilogy more than anyone else's. He yeah, also no, that's true. has a legitimate reason to come back with his whole healing factor and all that stuff. Like, mm-hmm. Wolverine in the comics has died a bunch of times and has always come back. And so, like, to kill now, him off... Can with... he actually come back if he is actually dead? Yeah, like I said, he died in the comics a bunch of times and always comes back somehow. I don't I don't know any of the specifics of how it works, but, like, it's not, it's not that big of a stretch where, like, Scott yeah. Summers, Jean Grey, Charles Xavier, they're more humans, right? They don't really have... The ability to come back. I mean, Jean Grey kind of died in the end of the second one and came back, but I don't know. But did she? Because I'm kind of really confused about that whole thing. What actually happened to her? I think she exploded all her atoms away from her body and then pieced them back together. Something like that. So what did that have to do with Scott showing back up at that lake or whatever? She was calling to him. But why? Why was it at that moment she like was able to come back together? Just coincidence. Well, I think I will not coincidence, but th- like I don't know. I'm not no, sure. It's coincidence. <laughs> if you don't know, then what I'm saying is automatically right. I guess so. You're right. Good point. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. This moon, like I said, it, there's too many plot lines going on. They killed off all the characters, which seemed like a bad choice. They left all the bad characters, which seemed like an even worse choice. They took away Rogue's powers, which I don't really mind. Like her, no, I think if you're gonna have someone be cured, you know, show that there are mutants who want to be cured, I think she's the perfect one for that. Yeah, that that is one of the few arcs that actually is completed by this movie, right? Like yeah. Wolverine's arc is not completed. Scott just dies. He doesn't really have an arc. He's just kind of a grumpy person to Wolverine. Gene is like on the well, the upswing of her arc. Because Wolverine right? from minute one is Mr. Still Your Girlfriend. <laughs> like not even try to hide it. Yeah. yeah. So I get it. Like, no, I'd I'm not be irritated if someone showed up and wasn't even like trying to hide what their intentions were. Yeah, I'm not saying that his character was bad because of that. I'm saying that he didn't have an arc other than there wasn't anything to him other than that. Yeah, that was all his interaction was like, "Hey, 
leave my girlfriend alone type of thing. And then he dies, which so it's like, that's a bad arc. <laughs> that's a bad story. Uh, Storm is so boring in all of them. And then she becomes the leader of it all. And it's like, okay, there's it's this. Consistent, at least. But where? It was never really established that she was a leader. She was... No, they didn't even establish that till the third one when out of nowhere he's like, well, I always thought you would take over. Well, he's like... everyone else is dead. Yeah, he's like, well, Scott's not going to be able to do it because he's a different person now. So that he's just changed. leaves me with you. Um, <laughs> Xavier, he doesn't really have a great arc. Magneto no, does. not really. Magneto's arc is decent, right? Like... Going from like the the biggest villain to you know the most feeble person, but then they undo it at the end with him being able to get his powers back. Well, that's like they couldn't they couldn't quite commit to their choice, which is dumb because they killed off three main characters. So you so so you might as well have yeah at they that point. they should have just left it right like like don't act like you he, were going to maybe leave open to where you can bring back a movie with Magneto but there's not going to be but then they well never mind cuz then they did the same thing with Xavier too what so so you watched the 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 after credits scene right oh i think no, we've I, talked I about this before where oh, he full. his voice comes back right he's essentially in someone else's body that's right. Which they they vague or briefly talk about like in the beginning of the yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. like transferring the consciousness or something like yeah. that. So they do that. So yeah. I guess technically they leave it open for both of them to come back. I guess I was so done with this movie as soon as the credits rolled. I just turned it off. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it, I, I don't know, man. It this one. One was thing not that good. really bothered me was how quickly. Magneto turned on Mystique when she wasn't a mutant anymore. Yeah, that was aggressive. Like, I don't, I feel like that, and maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but I feel like that's kind of out of character. Like, he's not, he wasn't all, oh, I don't don't know. You're not, you're not a mutant anymore, so I have no use for you. Yeah. Well, that's not true. I mean, yeah, not the same, but like, this is still something that you've known for like 20, 30 years. Yeah. Like, you're not just going to abandon them. They're still going to be on your team. She's not going to automatically hate you because you're a mutant. Yeah, but I think he hates her was more of the thing. No, I know that. I'm just saying that I I think that was dumb. Yeah, I mean, it's illogical, but I mean, isn't all hate illogical, Taylor? Isn't that the point? Uh, hate, hate. Hate and racism doesn't make sense, Taylor. Don't do it. Okay. Don't judge people. Don't don't do racist. Don't be racist. Um, um, what was the other? I liked. I what did you think about the actual cure mutant? But the boy who played him, or just the power in general? Just the character. Yeah. Uh, the character is boring, but it was intentional. Um, the idea liked, of it is kind of cool, but the weaponizing it seems. Like a stretch to me. Yeah. Like. Yeah. How that's, that's like, uh, yeah, that seems impossible. Yeah. To like weaponize you, I don't feel, genetics. I don't feel like you could do that with any other powers either. Right. You couldn't shoot Wolverine's DNA into people and then turn into like have healing power, you know, like, but I, I guess yeah, the, I, the point was. Just his presence canceled it out, and so shooting his DNA into people would do that. I don't know. It's weird. It's strange. I liked um, I liked the scene where Beast goes to see him. Yeah, and, he's and turns, when he gets close, his hand kind of turns yeah. human. I thought that was pretty cool. What'd uh, you, and then, what's that? What do you think about the Juggernaut? Uh, I remember really liking it, like, uh, younger, and I think he's fine now. He's kind of corny, though. Yeah, he's real corny. What do you think about his but, abs? Those always bother oh, me. I, I, I love the abs. <laughs> they look so awkward. Yeah, they're weird. Because it's, I mean, it's, um, it's definitely a bodysuit, and it just, like, doesn't, it doesn't look right. I liked him fighting with, uh, whatever Wolverine? the girl's name is. Oh, uh... uh Kitty Pride, Ellen Page. Kitty Pride. 
and them trying to. Do you know that's Ellen Page like, from Juno? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. From <laughs> Juno? Wait, hold on. This are you saying that this is the same Ellen Page from Apocalypse? Uh, it's the same. Or Days of Futures Past, or one of whatever it is. That she's in one of those ones. Right? It's the same Ellen Page from that weird movie with Jason State, not Jason Statham, Jason Bateman. Uh, Where, Juno. Okay, got it. Oh yeah, I was thinking that was a different movie. What else is Ellen Page in? Um, that's it. Just those two. That's definitely not true. But no. Um, them outsmarting Juggernaut by using the the cure, you know, to yeah, yeah, yeah. to weaken him and get him stuck in the in the floor. Yeah. Um. What else? I liked. I like that. I don't. There's something about Iceman. Is that Iceman? It's Iceman, right? Yep. I don't. I don't like him. <laughs> I th- I think I like the concept of Iceman. I don't think I like the guy who played him. He seems like a doofus. Um. Well, that's Iceman's character, I think, too. Like, I'm talking about the actor. Yeah. He seems like he's from like a, like a '90s high school movie. Well, I think he is, but uh, and that's also what this is. Um, kind yeah. Is it though? It's a it's about a school, right? It's about high school's kids. From the nineties, though, in the two thousands, basically the same time. Okay. Um, but his character, I think, is consistent with the way he played him. Like him being like that is consistent. Like I think it was all intentional. The yeah. things you don't like what? is the stuff they're trying to do. Well, then that makes it a poor movie. <laughs> what do you think about Kelsey Grammer? I don't like him. I really I don't, don't like him in this. I think uh, Beast is I one like of the Kelsey worst Grammer. characters. Yeah, I. But him is way, way too distracting. Yeah. As Kelsey Grammer to be a mutant, even when he doesn't look like Kelsey Grammer, it's it was too much. Well, also you don't believe at all he could do any of that stuff. No, like and, like Kelsey Grammer is the last person I would imagine like fighting, and jumping around, and clawing people. It just well, it's you, a funny visual to, to even, think of. Not even like when you consider it's Kelsey Grammer, but the way his physicality when he's just walking in the suit and all the makeup, he just yeah. is like so stiff. You're like, wait, this is supposed I can, to be. I am as a. I think he's a great politician. Yeah, right. No, that but, works. But during that that last battle or whatever, it was just. And then he's like doing his fighting, but he's like interjecting like little one liners that have to do with like diplomacy. <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But uh, what oh, so what do you funny. rank this on a, the scale of negative five to five? Um, uh, I'd probably give this one a one. Oh really? I think a negative one. So, oh really? Yeah, I don't like it. I was bored. It put me to sleep a couple times. I had to go back and rewatch stuff, and that that's never a good sign. That's true. So. I, one final question about this one. At yep. the very end, we see Magneto, and he's just an old man in the park, and he's playing chess. And there's that, the little quiver of a, of a whatever you want to call it. Chess piece. Is that? Yeah. So are they sh- are they saying that the cure is wearing off, or yes. that he's so strong that he still kind of has some of his power? It's probably up for debate, but I think the idea is the cure is wearing off. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wasn't sure. So, so technically, Mystique could also come back. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we know that they don't do anything with that, so it doesn't matter. But, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah um, so that I think that kind of wraps up our X Men Three: The Last Stand conversation. But we will uh, be yeah. back next week with. Uh, X-Men Origins, I think, is the next one, right? Yes, I am equally looking forward to this and not looking forward to this. I, I really don't want to watch this one. I'm not Because I want to watch this. that opening scene. But also, I, mean, I know we've good. talked about I know we've talked about this before, but like I've never actually seen the finished version of this movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I am interested in seeing that. Not that it's really going to change things. Yeah. 
Um, but I, I like the mutants in that one. I think they're better mutants. Yes. Sort of. I'm they're try- wasted. I'm trying to but... keep it. This one's got the guy from the Black Eyed Peas in it. It's got... Uh... Oh, Will I, oh, Will I Am. It's yeah. got Charlie from Lost. It's got the other dude from Lost. Is, um... Oh, got what's Ryan that guy's Reynolds? name? The guy... The only thing I can think of him is Big Fat Liar that you would know right off the bat. Paul Giamatti? Yeah, Paul Giamatti. Is he the blob in this one? Is that... Oh, no, that's the dude from Lost. The Kev, uh, Kevin Durant? No, what's his name? Kevin... He... Okay, so he was in Lost, right? He yeah. came on the, on the freighter. He was like that mercenary team. Okay. And then does Paul one, Giamatti? He, I feel like we had this conversation before. Does Paul Giamatti play any character in the X Men universe? I don't believe so. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Super you thought he was the Blob? In my head, he's the Blob. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember that. I, I want to say that guy's name is Kevin Durant or Kevin Durant. But also, I think one of those Durand is a basketball Durand? player. Yeah. It's Durand. That's right. Was he the blob in 12 Years a Slave? Is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah, that's got to be it. I don't know what you're really thinking of. I don't know. I'm looking through. I will say, though, I really do like Paul Giamatti. He was in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Was he the uh, the rhino guy? Yeah, he was rhino. Have you ever watched the show Billions? I have not. That is a good show. He's great in that. And it's got Damien Lewis from Band of Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, you've told me about it a few times. It's it's pretty good. Paul Giamatti's um, great in that. Apparently I'm just making stuff up. I have no idea what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I really don't either. He's in Saving Private, uh, right? Yeah, he's got a little cameo. All right. Well, like I said, next week we will do X-Men Origins. And uh, thanks for listening. Follow us on Twitter at Pod. Like us on Facebook. And uh, we'll be back soon.